This started a little bit of a revolution in Australia. People started to make their own surfboards and we sort of started a bit of an industry and people started to surf that weren't lifesavers. So you ended up with the general public surfing as well. My name is uh, Robert Ryan. I'm the president or chair of the Gold Coast Surf Museum, Surf World Gold Coast Australia. It all began with lifesavers uh, using their paddle boards and just really standing up on them when they came back in. Uh, these boards were very bulky, 16 foot hollow, had a plug in them to let the water out, uh, not very surf craft at all. The, invent of, uh, the advent of balsa surfboards in Australia in 1955 was the Californians came out to Australia and in the words of Midget Farrelly, it was like the aliens had landed. These surfboards they had were totally different again. So surfboard design has influenced the, the birth of surfing in so many different eras all the way through. These balsa surfboards, we couldn't get balsa in Australia. We could, even all of our solid timbers absorb moisture, so we couldn't use them until we actually imported from Peru. So prior to this, the Australian guys made a replica of the solid timber board hollow again with a plug to let the water out when it leaked. And they weren't very successful. The Okanui only lasted a few years and then we imported balsa. They revolutionised surfboard. Then we had a man called Bob Evans. Now Bob had surfed from the 50s all the way through and Bob loved his surfing. He also was a bit of an entrepreneur. So Bob started making surf movies. Uh, he was expanding into the media more and more with surfing and bringing it to different cultures. So the population of surfers again grew. Bob McTavish and George Greeno, two of the biggest influences on the shortboard era. Now, George Greeno was a marine biologist and he took the fin of a tuna and put it on a surfboard. He took the outline of a cuttlefish and made a surfboard that outline. Everything was made from nature. Very good, very ingenious man. Um, this fin revolutionized the turning of the surfboard again. Prior to this, you're at the back of the board you could turn halfway up the board. So we're actually having, and this was fun, more fun than we'd ever had before. The Stubbies was the first of the contest. 10,000 spectators, 10,000. You don't even get 10,000 people today. It was a massive event and it ran for nearly 10 years more. And the prize money was always good prize money. The era of surfing just changed. We had a few revolutions here and there. Then Mark Richards. We started competing in Hawaii. Now, in Hawaii, they're big waves, they're powerful waves, and everybody was using very long guns, as we call them, big boards. Mark Richards went to Hawaii with a, a six foot six twin fin, just two fins, a little bit wider. Now those two fin, that twin fin, they all laughed at him, told him he would never work in Hawaii. It was too small. Mark won four world titles on it and he tore the place apart, revolutionised surfing again. Because prior to this, we were actually hitting the, the white water and coming back over. Mark on the little twin fin, he was going underneath the lip and turning. He was all over the wave. In those days, you won a competition with the amount of manoeuvres you were doing. So Mark did more manoeuvres than anybody because of the shortboard. So, we love our surfing in Australia.